Greetings, pianists from many nations. I greet you. Our topic today is on the practice of keeping a zibaldone. What, you ask, is a zibaldone? This word is Italian and it means heap of things. So it's a personal notebook that really could have anything in it that you want, but for us, of course, it's focused on music. Now this practice goes all the way back to musicians of the 16th, 17th, 18th centuries in Italy who would keep a notebook for uh, interesting passages that they found, exercises that they needed to carry out, rules of composition, of voice leading, observations on theory, advice from their master that uh, they needed to remember, uh, really anything that they wanted to refer to and remember. So I like the idea of reviving the Zibaldone tradition. Now for a while, I was thinking about sequences in Bach fugues, and I was trying to collect sequences, and so every time I saw a cool one, I would take a picture of it with my phone. And probably somewhere on here in, in my photos, there's, you know, little photos of sequences. The problem is I never did anything with them because it's very easy to take a picture with your phone and then not do anything with it. It requires no effort. And so none of those sequences made any impression on me. I couldn't tell you what they were. When you take notes with a pen on paper, particularly when you are writing down music, which is slow and painstaking, that makes a deep impression on your mind. And most of what you write down, you will remember. So it is strategic as a way of teaching yourself things that you want to know. Um, so, let's take a look at some things that are in my Zibaldone. All right, we'll take a look at the Zibaldone. Drew a little picture on the front for fun. It's a heap of things. And I started by thinking about fugue subjects. And then I started collecting fugue subjects for improvisation. More fugue subjects. More fugue subjects. Boy, somebody likes fugue subjects. My best fugue subjects. I like spurious fugue subjects. <laughs> oh, we need to know about episodes. All kinds of different chord progressions that work in between fugue presentations. Those are useful. Episodes. Look at all the episodes. I was thinking about how two voices behave together. Found some cool examples of that. Oh, you gotta know your sequences. Yeah. So, I did this part. I was on vacation and I would just stay up late at night going through music and writing down anything that sounded great. Good sequence from Bach. Oh yeah, sequences with interspersed secondary chords. Those are cool. I had to write them down to think about them though before I really understood. Mm, compositional rules. It's a good one. Rule of the octave. Ascending patterns. The dissonances. Oh, it's a great one. The Uber Lamento passage. Bach loved to use that. Oh yeah, I wanted to memorize the omnibus progression from Liszt, so I wrote it down by hand. So how do you improvise imitative counterpoint? I had to think about that for a long time. Write down a lot of examples. Try them out at the piano, see if they work. Examples from literature. Oh, I found this great piece by Zelenka that I love so much. I just copied down the whole continual part so I could study why it sounded so bodacious. So, oh, schemata. Yes. All the different gallant schemata. How they work. I was listening to 
a Dittersdorf harpsichord concerto as one does. And I heard this beautiful passage, and I said, I can't quite figure out what that is. So I went in and copied the whole thing by hand, and then did a kind of reduction on it. And I said, wait a second, I'm kind of catching a pattern here. So I took it apart a little bit more until I finally understood what was happening and what would happen if you played around and uh, changed the, the order of the voices and stuff and how it relates to another progression. It's not quite the same thing, but it has similar qualities. And then memorized all of it and wrote it out so that I can play it whenever I want in any key I'm improvising. Oh, French overture rhythms. How do you play things that sound like a French overture? So I went through Bach and other people and just found things that I thought sounded cool. Here's my cat. Wrote them down so I'd remember them. So I recommend to you the practice of keeping a Zibaldone, whether that's for insights on technical matters, understanding music theory, interesting repertoire that you come across, comments on preparing to perform, uh, rehearsal practices, anything that you think is valuable to you that you really want to remember, get a pen, get some paper, put it in a book, and keep a Zibaldone. See you later.